Welcome back to the gun bench. I've gotten a few requests for how I load my brass shot shells. So these shot shells here are 12 gauge. I'm just gonna load up a couple 12 gauge shells here uh, just to show you how I do it. There's a lot of videos of these on the internet already, but this is just how I do it. It's pretty straightforward um, and it's pretty standard. So in any case, I've got two different shells here. I'll load two different ones. So if you notice, they're both CBC 12 gauges. Now this one, um, has been drilled out so that it will accept the 209 primer. This one still accepts the pistol primer. There's still a little bit of walnut in there from uh, when I put these through the tumbler. I don't clean these up 100%. Uh, after I fire them, I clean them with a little bit of hot water and soap, and, uh, and I let them sit in a little bit of vinegar and let them air dry. Uh, but I don't try to get all the scoring off. It doesn't, it doesn't really bother me. It doesn't really affect the shells either. So, in any case, when you do this, there's a few things you're going to need. Obviously, black powder. You can load these with smokeless. Uh, I do have a reloading manual that has a bunch of red dot loads in it with holes. I don't do that. I just load these with black. Uh, you're going to need shot. So this is copper-plated bismuth. This is number four. I'm going to be making a one-ounce load today. You are also going to need, if you're loading 12-gauge, 11-gauge nitro cards. 11 gauge fiber wads and 11 gauge overshot cards, even 10 gauge overshot cards. You're also going to need Duco cement, wax, some way to put the overshot card on, or you can crimp it if you have the RCBS cowboy loader. You're also going to need primers. There's a lot of things you need. So you'll either need large pistol primers or 209s, depending on what you have. Um, so these are CBC. These are made in Brazil uh, by Magtech. There are also ones you can get from RMC, Rocky Mountain Cartridge, and also Track of the Wolf. Rocky Mountain Cartridge will load you either one that you want here. They'll load uh, either pistol or shotgun primer. I don't know what Track of the Wolf is. I can't remember offhandedly, but their 10 gauges for sure are pistol primers. So there's one of my 10 gauge holes from them. So to start, the very first thing you need to do is prime these. So to prime these, there's a couple ways you can do it. You can either just put the primer there, get on a flat surface, and place it down. Or you can get a priming tool. You can get these on eBay. Pretty cheap. Reproductions, I think, are made. You might be able to find those on Track of the Wolf or Buffalo Arms. But the way this works, you take your brass hole, stick it in there. Now, this is my pistol primer one. So I'm going to go in here, pull out one of my primers. It's a pretty straightforward process. The only thing is you need to get these flush. If you do not get this flush, well, I guess it matters less if you're shooting them in like a pump or something like that. But if you're trying to shoot these in a single shot or a double barrel shotgun like me, if you don't get it flush, you are not going to get your gun to close all the way unless you have a really off the face gun, which I hope you don't. So you need to prime them. So this priming tool works with both the pistol, it also works with 209s. It's not an issue with the 209s. So I'll do them both at the same time here. Just some Chudite holes. Place these in here. So it's funny, I have 25 that take 209s and I have 25 that take pistol. So once you have primed those, you, I'm sorry, not primed, but put your actual primer in. Once you've done that, you then put your black powder in. You can get a shot dispensing tool like this. So it does shot and also powder, a dipper. You can get some muzzle loading tools to get your black powder in. There's really a million ways to do it. I do mostly everything by volume. So I know this is about an 80 grain load. So I'm shooting right around three drams, nothing too crazy. Put my powder in. Put my powder in my second one. They're both going to load exactly the same. So you get your powder in them. Once you have done that, you will then take your 11 gauge nitro cards. You will place these in both of your holes. Now, typically, when I'm doing this, I'll do like 25 at a time. I'm only doing two for the time being. Now what I use, I use a tapered three-quarter inch dowel. The way I tapered this, 
Uh, if I remember correctly, I had this chucked in a drill. I just spun the drill while I held this in my hand with sandpaper. So it's tapered. If you don't use a tapered one, they can get stuck. I'm going to press this down. You can put a scale under these if you want really consistent um, pressures. I don't worry too much about that. It's not something I'm too worried about. Once you have your nitro card in, you move on to your fiber wad. So, again, 11 gauge. I don't have these lubed. You can lube them. So I've lubed them in the past, and I've gotten to the point where I don't lube them anymore because I don't particularly see a point. I haven't had any differences in my patterning, lubing and not lubing. So I don't bother lubing them anymore. It's one less thing to do. Once you've gotten to this point, you have two different things you can do. So I put an overshot card on top of my fiber filler wad. Now the reason I do this is I believe that it helps hold. Oh, by the way, you can see it's from a Cheerio box. I have a puncher that I can punch out cardboard. It's useful instead of having to buy them all the time. I believe that it will help uh, the shot not embed into that fiber wad so that more shot is uh, going towards your target and not stuck in the wad. So once you have that done, you then put your shot in. Now for me, I'm putting one ounce, one ounce of shot in here. And usually you can do a square load. Square load meaning the same amount of black powder you put in here volume wise, you put lead or whatever you're putting in. This is bismuth, so it's not quite as dense as lead. So I'm actually putting in a little more bismuth than a square load. I patterned this load um, not too long ago, and it, oh, I lost one of the my bismuth copper-plated pieces here. But yeah, I patterned this just the other day. It patterned really well out of my shotguns. So I'm not going to change anything about it. Now once that is in, you then take an overshot card. One of these. You then grab a pen if you want to. You don't have to do this step, uh, but it's really helpful if you load a lot of different things to know what's in them. So for me, I have four bismuth in here. So I have some of these loaded right now with um, some number eights for target loads. Well, these are going to be for ducks and small game. So I write 4B on here. I don't typically bother writing what my actual charge is. Place these in. If you notice, I'm patting everything down with my dowel. I want them to be fairly tight in there. I then come over with my Duco cement. Open her up. I go right around the edge. Right around the edge. I'm going to let that sit. Do the same thing with this one, right around the edge. I have noticed I do sometimes use um, 10 gauge overshot to seal it just because it's a little tighter in there. I have had a few times when I've uh, shot a shotgun, especially in a double barrel, and I've had the overshot come loose. So I take my pen, I put it where it's not in the glue, and I make sure that these are pressed down. So that's my process for loading brass hulls. So again, you are going to need, obviously, your hulls. You are going to need nitro cards. This goes over the black powder. You are going to then need fiber wads. And you're then going to need overshot cards. You can make all these yourself or buy them. So in any case, I hope this was helpful. Uh, maybe a little bit informative. This is how I do it. This is my load for 12 gauge. Um, works pretty well. Again, this is for my guns. Don't use it in yours if you're not confident in them. They haven't been checked by a smith. But this is how I do it. Works well. Two of nines in these. I have pistol in those. Um, but it really doesn't make a difference in ignition, I've noticed. So, in any case, have a great rest of your day.